Welcome back to doing Konami's job for them. There are currently over 300 archetypes in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And that doesn't even encompass the archetypes that are technically unique but branch out from another. And although time and effort could be spent to fine-tune the underperforming archetypes with a new wave of support cards, Konami's MO dictates creating new, unique archetypes by name that basically do the same thing, just better than their predecessor. For the archetypes that weren't given the meta coat of paint by Big K, their only hope in modern support often comes from a single throwaway card that ropes in every faulty aspect of their playstyle and attempts to fix it. The reason card effects are so long that it makes the Lord of the Rings franchise sweat is because we're trying to fix three to four functions of a deck in a single goddamn card. Needless to say, the system is flawed. But today, we're going to ignore the fact that it has literally never worked. I'm stepping into the brain of Konami, looking at two archetypes that are lacking in support. We'll be trying to determine what a single card would need to fix all of their problems and mold them into a competitive success. Halloween is right around the corner, so let's start with something spooky. Umbral Horror is a small archetype of low-level dark fiend monsters that feel like they're right on the precipice of meta-relevance, but their playstyle of reserved field swarming just reeks of the era they came from, having premiered in Judgment of the Light. Ghost can special summon itself from the hand along with another level 4 or lower fiend monster, Ghoul can reduce its attack to zero to special summon an Umbral Horror, including itself from the hand on a soft once per turn. In the unlikely event that you open with three Ghouls and another Umbral Horror, your field is now ready with four monsters. Unform special summons two Umbral Horror monsters from the deck when destroyed by battle if it was the attacking monster on a hard once per turn. I hate that. Will-O-Wisp can match its level to another Umbral Horror monster on summon, provided you don't miss the timing, and if Will-O-Wisp, while in attack position, is destroyed by battle, it destroys the monster that destroyed it. I'll say what everyone is thinking, it's severely lacking, but don't count this one out just yet because I have a specific idea to make it work. Umbral Horror also has their very own back row in Corrupted Keys, a normal trap card that summons three tokens by targeting an Xyz monster you control, which we'll cover in a moment. Those tokens copy the attack of the targeted Xyz monster but are destroyed if the Xyz monster leaves the field. In the extra deck, by name, number C-104 Umbral Horror Masquerade is included in the archetype. However, they can't summon it. It's a rank 5. We'll get to that. C-104 can destroy a spell or trap on summon, and if the original number 104 is attached as Xyz material, it gains a grocery list of effects. On a soft once per turn quick effect, when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can detach one to negate the activation, send one random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard, then have your opponent's life points. All things considered, C-104 is actually a solid boss monster for this lackluster deck. Because Umbral Horror can't summon it on their own merit, we need to incorporate its non-chaos variant. The Honorary Umbral Horror, number 104, Masquerade. 104 takes three level 4 monsters, which is good because Umbral Horrors do that. Masquerade copies the effect of its Chaos counterpart with a monster effect negation, but can only negate an effect activated during the battle phase. Then, you burn your opponent for 800, and as a soft once per turn, you can mill the top card of your opponent's deck. The deck really isn't that bad, just outdated and slower than most, but they have very clear potential. So, what do we need to include in just one card to speed them up and fix their inherent flaws? In the spirit of Konami, I've ultimately decided that a field spell would best suit their needs and you best believe it's going to be filled to the brim with effects. Touching on my specific idea for Wisp, I'd start with a hard once per turn creature swap effect. This is hyper specific to Willow Wisp, allowing you to gain control of one of your opponent's problematic monsters while giving them a zero attack Willow Wisp, which you can then attack with your newly gained monster, dealing significant damage to your opponent, then activating the effect of Willow Wisp to destroy your attacking monster. Next, because the majority of Umbral Horror effects rely on your archetypal monsters being in the hand to special summon, adding a certain on activation for two Umbral Horror Monsters is a no-brainer. The best spam option for this deck is having three ghouls and two other Umbral Horror Monsters in hand, one of which needs to be Ghost, so another addition to this card's effect would be either discarding or revealing an Umbral Horror Monster to search a different name. 
The last effects that I would add gives a sprinkle of protection to your field, including the Xyz monsters. Just a simple Battle Tutor-esque effect that if an Umbral Horror main deck monster is removed from the field, you can special summon another Umbral Horror monster with a different name from your hand or deck. And if an Xyz monster has an Umbral Horror monster as material, it either can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. I'd lean towards the non-destruction, where for the most part the Umbral Horror Xyz lineup can respond to effects that would target them. It gives a nice balance of protection. We've covered a dark archetype, so let's show some love to a light-oriented deck, one of my personal favorites, the Hunter family. The Hunter archetype is made of just four level 4 light thunder monsters, and their effects are a bit more straightforward compared to Umbral Horror. Daddy and Mommy Hunter give an additional normal summon as a non-once per turn. Bro Hunter searches a level 4 light thunder monster on normal summon, also non-once per turn. And Sis Hunter banishes a level 4 light thunder monster from grave on normal summon, then adds adds it to your hand during the end phase. Not sure why it couldn't just be added directly from Grave, but here we are. They also have their adopted pet, Thunder Seahorse, but even with the added consistency from Seahorse, that lockout of special summoning, which applies before you would even activate its effect, neuters any viability they might have had. This one's easy. I'd give them a rank 4 2 material Xyz monster as their single modern support card. The card would first copy the effect of Thunder Seahorse, searching two level 4 light or thunder monsters on Xyz summon only. Before anyone complains, I would still retain the limitation for special summoning, but instead of a complete lockout, the player would be locked into light and or thunder monsters. It's no question that the Hunter archetype benefits from the search from Seahorse, but again, that lockout leaves you sitting on less than substantial monsters. Sticking to their theme of repeated normal summons, something gadgets could only dream of doing, this new Xyz monster would come equipped with a non-once-per-turn ultimate offering effect. Detaching an Xyz material to normal summon an additional level 4 light thunder monster with 2,000 or less attack. This covers all of your thunder monsters as well as some additional heavy hitters, namely Thunder King Ryo. But wait! There's more! Giving a bit more spotlight to Bro Hunter, every time a Thunder Monster is normal summoned, this Xyz monster can attach a light or Thunder Monster from either graveyard to itself as Xyz material. That sounds crazy, and in theory gives you an infinite summoning loop. However, it is entirely dependent on constantly maintaining Thunder Monsters in your hand to be able to normal summon. Suddenly, Bro Hunter becomes just as important as Mommy and Daddy. Originally, if you summon Bro Hunter following Pa Hunter or Ma Hunter, your line of summoning stops there, and we've addressed that accordingly. Like I said, I think the Umbral Horror archetype is only a couple steps away from the door of meta relevance, and Hunters are maybe four or five steps away. All of these effects in one new support card would undoubtedly buff their decks in a really good way, but that brings up the bigger issue of single support cards being jam-packed with effects addressing every problem within an archetype. No matter how many effects you cram into just one card, no matter how many flaws you correct in that single card, no matter how hyper-consistent you make that lone support card, you, you can, can still, still only run three, three copies. copies. And unless that one card is indestructible or has its own means of self-recovery, once those three copies are gone, you're shit out of luck. The two archetypes we've discussed today, as well as the myriad of Yu-Gi-Oh's archetypes that have no hope in competing in the meta wasteland, need a legitimate and substantial wave of modern support cards. I don't usually beg, but I'm here on my knees, Konami. Please stop the one card support waves. Please stop cramming 4 plus corrective effects into these cards. Please make serious legacy support for these archetypes, and I mean 3 cards minimum, if they are chosen for such treatment. That's going to wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. We've covered a couple different aspects of modern support, so what's your opinion? What are some old archetypes that need new support? And what's your standing on the half-assed and random support that Konami gives to failing archetypes? Drop a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to show that like button some love. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. Signing off.